if you're afraid of success, acknowledge that and work through it. You're listening to Femcanic Garage, the podcast that features women in the automotive and motorsports industries. A community that elevates, empowers, and evolves by smashing stereotypes and breaking down barriers for women. I'm your host, Jamie Blossman. Buckle up for the ride, Femcanics. Jesse Jackson is in the driver's seat today. Jesse is a businesswoman, investor in automotive businesses, and a proud mom of six. She is the owner of Mango Automotive and dubbed as the Auto Repair Queen. In 2021, she completed her first auto shop acquisition with zero dollars out of pocket. Since, Jesse has acquired multiple automotive repair shops, and there's no stopping her now. Now let's sit back and enjoy the ride. Hello, Femcanics. This is Jamie B coming to you, and I have Jesse Jackson in the hot seat today. How are you doing today, Jesse? Hey, I'm doing great, Jamie. Thanks. How are you? I'm doing well. We were kind of chuckling a little bit where uh, you'd mentioned it, it's earlier there than it is here. I'm in uh, Eastern Standard Time, and let's see, you are on, is it Mountain Time? Yeah, Mountain here. Yeah, so it's a little earlier there. But uh, I appreciate you uh, inviting us in to pre-coffee or during coffee time <laughs> Bef- and jump into this interview and share your story. And I, I stumbled upon you in the only, per- the only woman I've ever stumbled upon in this industry, the way that I stumbled upon you was actually I was in a training and I'm a serial entrepreneur and... It was through a training around buying businesses, and you shared that you own multiple shops. I'm like, oh my gosh. So I looked you up on LinkedIn, did my stalking to make sure that you fit the Femcanic Garage profile. You passed with flying colors, and I took a chance, reached out, and said, would you be interested in being on the show? And you graciously accepted but your it was fate, the, the it stars was fate. aligned us. It was fate. And, and it's crazy because one of the things that I love about sharing the different journeys of all the different aspects of this industry is how women get into the industry. And the women who aren't in the industry that listen to the Femcanic Garage podcast have come up to me and said, you know, I thought. I didn't think I would be as interested in your podcast as what I am. What they came to find out is what we talk about on this podcast is real life things, what it's like to be a mother, an entrepreneur, be a mother in this industry. But one of the biggest comments I get is, wow, I never thought about being in this industry until I listened to some of the journeys that the women that you've interviewed and how they got into it and what they ultimately ended up doing in the industry, like their minds are blown around all the different facets of it. So I have to ask, did you always know that you were going to be in the automotive industry? (laughs) Far from it. I sort of wandered into this space. I grew up, so both of my grandparents had were sort of in the automotive space. My paternal grandmother had a uh, aviation repair shop and my maternal, sorry, grandfather, my maternal grandfather um, had a hit shop. So I feel like I grew up in those spaces and was comfortable, but I certainly didn't imagine it for myself. My degree is in environmental engineering and I worked in that for a few years, but I had my first daughter at during the 2007 2008 crash so those jobs sort of evaporated and I found myself in the software building business for 13 years and it just so happened that my last software project was in the automotive space so when they kicked me to the curb for being the only woman in uh in a in a male company man dominated industry I thought that I was going to show them. So I actually have a 
plan to build another piece of software, but I'm doing that through acquisitions of automotive repair shops. And I find myself here. It, it's, it's wild. Like, but let me back up because I want clarification. Did you say hit shop? Like H I T hitch hitch like hitch. trailer hitches. Mm-hmm. Oh, okay. Okay. And I'm sitting yeah. here thinking, I'm like hit shop. What is that? Okay. <laughs> hit, hitch. Hitches, okay. I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm following you now. I'm, I'm picking up what you're throwing here. So you stumbled into the industry and it wasn't planned and you stumbled into it through design Am, am I right? Yeah. Like customer yeah, experience software design. And design. Yeah. User experience design. And my background was in like chief product officer, which is sort of in the design space for building software. And I just happened to have a client that was in the automotive space. And I thought, well, if, as I imagine the next step in my career, it sort of makes sense to stay in the automotive space since I'm already in it. Now, when you first started working in the automotive space, what what was that experience like for you? What did you think of the automotive space? Because okay, you, well, yeah. you didn't like grow up in it. So, <laughs> well, you have to remember I came from software, which is like a very male dominated industry. So I sort of landed in this other male dominated industry. So I think from that respect, like I wasn't intimidated or anything like that. I am like used to just fighting through those stereotypes because I've been in, I mean, engineering, software, and now automotive my whole life. But I think just like having my grandfathers, like growing up in their shops, like made me feel comfortable in that sort of, you know, like dirty space where um, we're working on cars. And I mean, yesterday I was at a shop just like sweeping up glass in the parking lot. Um, so I think, you know, I feel pretty comfortable, like in the actual, you know, shop itself, just because of how I grew up. But the most successful women that I have met and interviewed, they have one common thing all together. And, and you fell right into this bucket, Jesse. And it is when they are told that they cannot do something and not even necessarily <laughs> well, you, you can't do it because you're a girl. And for some reason, I don't know why. Don't get me on that soapbox. <laughs> <laughs> Women, right. That it's almost like a challenge. Like, Hey, I'm, I'm putting the challenge out on the table that I don't think you can do it. And the most successful women that I have ran into is that when that gauntlet is put out there, it fuels their fire to another level. Now I noticed that fire in you in the pre-interview where you shared a a story with me that we'll talk a little bit about, but you know, what's done is done, but I want to give just a little bit of high level background that here you are, you were asked to be a part of this company based on your customer and user experience and your product design right? And not just as a associate, you were brought in as an executive. And then that company was bought and poof, you weren't involved in any of the meetings, you were excluded from things. And when I watched you, Jesse, it, it, there was this fire in you where I'm like, Ooh, we need to bottle that up and, and, and teach how you get that. But what, tell me what is going on inside of you? Like what it, so that women start to understand that when you have those feelings, it's okay to feel it. And it's okay to use that as drive. Yeah. I think that's a good summary of sort of what happened to me. I, um, well, had a client that asked me to come on full time as an executive position when they were acquired. Um, it was a team of men doing the acquisition, 12 men, and they had one woman doing HR on their executive team. Um, here I am, the chief product officer, and they found exactly zero occasions to interview me, have lunch with me, talk to me about the future of the product. They were absolutely not interested in having a conversation. And they told me my position was being eliminated. <laughs> So there is a little bit like in three years, I want to come back and say, look what I built. Don't you wish maybe you had had a conversation with me because I could have been very useful to you. 
but instead you didn't. And I think I don't have the energy to sort of, I think, you know, someone who worked with me there is suing them, another woman. I don't have the energy to follow that through in my life. Like, I don't want to waste time there, but I am going to show them <laughs> by building something, I, building something great that they will maybe have a tinge of regret about. And even if they don't acknowledge it in real life, it is sort of, it has given me some fire to show them up. I mean, they were a PE company, so what they were doing was acquisitions. So as I am doing my own acquisitions in the automotive repair space, um, it is a little bit to stick it to them. This is a great time to launch into the red line round. And what the red line round is, it's five rapid fire questions. You didn't warn me about this. (laughs) No right or wrong answer. Whatever pops into your head is the right answer. You ready? I don't have a cheat sheet. I'm not ready. Go ahead. (laughs) Who or what has been your inspiration throughout your journey in this industry? I I think for me, just a little bit of fuck you to all the men who have undervalued me. (laughs) I I think that is my all-time favorite answer to that question. (laughs) And I have interviewed over 100 women, and I think it's my favorite one. Oh, I love it. (laughs) What is your parting advice to other femcanics finding their way in this industry? This is so much pressure. I just, an encouragement, like you're already doing it. You're in the industry. Um, I'm proud of you. Do whatever it makes you happy. If you're, you know, afraid of success, acknowledge that and work through it. My name is Jesse Jackson. I'm the owner of Mango Automotive, and I'm a Femcanic. Hey, Femcanics, this is Jamie B. Thanks for listening to the preview. If you would like to listen to the complete interview, we provided two convenient links below that will link directly to this episode. These links take you to Spotify or Apple Podcasts. You can always go to your favorite podcast listening platform and search for Femcanic Garage. While you're there, if you don't mind, hit that subscribe button and give us a rating. It helps the podcast reach more women. And just know, we appreciate you and your support. This is Jamie B. signing off. Are you a femcanic?